Lee Sanders, head partner of this family-owned firm of Sanders, Sanders, Block, Roysick, Wiener and Grossman did deliberately sabotage my excellent case of a slip and fall in Kings County Supreme Court because, when I was an employee of five years, I fought back when Stanley refused to follow federal law and give me my 401k when I left. I received it six months later from his trained bad dog Liz Law Mountain. He is he in the habit of giving trouble to each and every person, for many years, anyone who would consider leaving his employment without being fired. The audacity. A lawyer who does not follow the law. Is this a joke or what? Does he think he is a king? That is doing criminal anarchy of the Constitution. I did not know he held a grudge against me since 2003. That is 14 years ago. When I broke my kneecap at 61 years old, at first he acted like he cared. Along with Mike Villick. That I worked with. Until one by one, no notice was given to the city. Actions appeared that he failed to do, and failed to do so deliberately on my behalf. He has received money from the defendant, the one who caused the accident. He is supposed to represent me, instead of the defendant. There are many laws he has broken. Fiduciary laws, contract laws, too many to count. He paid off the judge to keep this case going that he out of the blue, has decided he does not want to represent me anymore. Remember I signed a retainer. He has an obligation according to the law. Is this the kind of lawyer you want to represent you? He didn't want to represent me anymore because I caught on to what he was doing. Now I represent myself in Supreme Court. In a case that should have ended at the four-month mark, now three years later has no end in sight. Stanley sabotaged my case so much that no attorney would take this case with even with five witnesses, now malignant and waiting. So much for his negotiations. A whole group of people towards that trial. Not just the trial attorney, but the prep people, the law people, everybody that's involved in putting on a trial production. And if you do that, and if the insurance companies understand that you're willing to take a case to trial, they will pay you a different amount of money than they will pay a law firm that just shows up or just makes telephone calls. And it's our job to maximize the recovery for each and every one of our clients. Every insurance company knows who we are. They know they have a choice. They can pay me now a reasonable amount of money, or they can take the case to trial, and we will try to beat their brains in. And that's, that's simple. And that's a fact that everybody knows. The judges know that. The court officers know that. Everybody in this industry knows that, and that's why we are successful. When you are around this long, you learn how to take every case and maximize its value. You know when you need an engineer. You know when you need an expert. You know when you need an economist, a vocational expert. And whatever you need, doctors, engineers, you have to have the money to pay for it, and we do. When a client comes into our office after being injured in an automobile accident, uh, they're usually very distraught and don't know what their rights are. Uh, we protect them here and we make sure that they're protected the same way the insurance companies are. Uh, our clients who are injured in a car accident are entitled to have all of their medical bills paid for, uh, for any injuries sustained in that accident. Uh, if a client has to miss any time from work, they're entitled to be repaid and receive lost earnings for the time they're out of work. Uh, and usually clients are very, very upset, they're very emotional and they need a hand to hold and somebody to guide them. And I'm very happy that we can do that for our clients here. Uh, we've handled thousands and thousands of automobile cases for our clients. Uh, and we make sure that they get everything they are entitled to. Again, the insurance companies have thousands of attorneys working for them 24-7. And we're able to do that too, give that 24-7 guidance and assistance to our clients to make sure they're getting the proper medical treatment and uh, to make sure that for the rest of their lives uh, they're going to be protected. Uh, especially when somebody injures something like their neck or their back. It's not as obvious as you see somebody walking around with a cast on. Uh, spinal injuries, neck and back injuries don't heal. They're permanent and our clients suffer with those for the rest of their lives. And it's important that they have attorneys fighting for them who understand that, understand the nature of a neck and back type of injury and understand that these injuries uh, will last forever and we have to make sure our clients get the compensation they're entitled to uh, for those injuries. 
and I'm very proud of the fact that we do that uh, on a daily basis and have been for many years for our clients here. I have a personal interest in construction site accident cases because it goes back to when uh, every boy was a little boy. You walked upon a construction site, you looked up, you saw these workers putting up giant steel, building these giant buildings, digging these giant holes in the ground with big machinery. It's what every little kid likes to watch. And thankfully for me, that's translated into uh, what I do now. Um, but what I'm more aware of now is exactly how dangerous those construction sites are. There, New York State has special rules that protect construction site workers, and they're very detailed. There are special rules for any worker that works on a roof, a scaffold, um, or at any type of height. Workers are constantly getting hurt at construction sites because general contractors responsible for safety do not do what they're supposed to do. They don't, put, um, they don't put up the proper netting, they don't put up proper lanyards, they don't put up harnesses. What they're interested in is saving money. I take a lot of personal satisfaction in ultimately settling uh, construction site accident cases. Because implicit in the settlement, when my, um, my injured construction worker uh, is paid money because of the injuries they should never have suffered in the first place, implicit in that settlement is an acknowledgement that that general contractor or building owner responsible for safety did something wrong. We see clients all the time who have been injured uh, on premises, so buildings and, and uh, property of other people, and uh, it's, a, it's a very unique area of law in many ways because the job that we face, the, the task at hand is demonstrating that there's liability for a condition on that land. People trip and fall on property and they say, well, I fell on somebody's property and therefore it should be easy for me to just simply bring a claim. And it's not always the case. Proving that the landowner was on notice or that the landowner created the condition is a, is a chore, is a task. We pull out all the stops to make sure we exhaust every possible piece of information that we can accumulate so that we can prosecute our clients' claims. We are in this business for many years and we understand how pain can affect somebody and making sure that while they're suffering that pain and we're, 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 we're collecting their medical records, we're making sure they're being seen by specialists who can come to court, who can support the evidence in the case showing why that client is feeling the pain. Most importantly I think is the fact that we make sure we explain to our clients every step of the way what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve on their behalf and making sure that somebody has fallen on somebody's property, our clients are going to get the recovery they deserve. Here at the Sanders Firm, we represent uh, patients and families of patients who have been victims of medical negligence. Uh, families come to us because they've been to doctors where they expect to be cured, to get better, to improve, and instead they get worse. Um, that can be at hospitals, that can be doctor's offices, that can be nursing homes. Um, Patients who go into nursing homes are the most vulnerable in our society. Families trust the nursing homes to take care of them. So patients who are victims of abuse, victims of neglect, are especially vulnerable. Um, those patients are patients that need the most help. Uh, with my experience having represented hospitals and nursing homes, I, I know what the insurance companies are going to do to try to hide the information. The most gratifying moment for me in practicing at the Sanders firm is that moment when we get compensation for victims of medical negligence, for the families who have lost loved ones, for people who are injured. It's just a great feeling to close that out and get that compensation. <laughs>
I don't care if you are injured than on the walker. Stanley needs to get federal. I will make sure the insurance pays Stanley first. You can wait in my pot. Too bad you are crippled. More for my pot. Tell Stanley he's been doing a great job for 50 years feeding me.